So now we'll see what was the trend or what is the trend in CSAT over the years. Now, even though CSAT introduced in 2011, so from 2011 to 2015, if you see there, the CSAT marks used to be considered for the cutoff. That means your cutoff from 2011 to 2015, at least 2014. So in 2015, it has changed till 2014. It has, uh, so we used to include both GS1 and CSAT paper for your prelims cutoff uh, preparation. So now in 2015, they have changed the pattern that in 2015, they made, if you get 33% marks in CSAT, that is enough. So they made the CSAT paper as qualifying. So from 2015 now till now, your GS1 marks will be considered for the cutoff. Now, so this decision was uh, mainly to help people from non-math backgrounds, for example, arts and commerce backgrounds. So, so many people were happy when uh, in 2015 they introduced this decision, but maybe the engineers were not happy. But over the years, if you see, the engineers are failing even in CSAT, even people from uh, IIT, NIT, all those people are also failing in CSAT. I have seen some people who are good in their college days or engineering days who have failed in CSAT. Okay, so here the P so here engineers thought that, okay we can easily clear this, but you can see what happened in 2023. Then, if you see the trend, so in 2015, if you see there are somewhere around 30 questions from RC. Okay, on an average, even if you see from 2011 to 15, somewhere around 30 questions used to be from RC and Logical reasoning questions used to be more, more than 25 questions. Okay, and there used to be some questions from data interpretation also somewhere around at least four questions you can take. take. Okay, then similarly, there used to be questions from decision making, which used to be very easy. Uh, for example, uh, a short ethical case studies where the answer will be mostly easy for most of the people. At least there, there used to be somewhere around two to three questions from decision making, correct? So, and the quantitative math part, there used to be less than 20 questions, okay? But if you see over the years, so till 2019, there are not many changes. So slowly what they did was uh, the topics which were easy for example your data interpretation and decision making questions they have removed this so in 2019 these were not there so they were asking more more or less the rc questions and logical reasoning questions and quant part okay so now till 2019 if you see 2019 so there were only mainly three sections rc logical reasoning and quant part Okay, now in 2023, if you see, so in 22, 23, there is a random shift or a jump in the kind of question that they're asking. Okay, what they are trying to do, they are trying to do the, the uh, reading comprehension questions, they are making them subjective, the answers are subjective. Or they are trying to bring so many new keywords or the difficult kind of uh, English or uh, reading comprehension words, they're asking more questions from assumption, corollary, okay, inference, all that. So, which is a little bit tricky because the answers might be subjective. Then, in logical reasoning, so if you see in 2019 or till 2022, they used to ask good number of questions from logical reasoning. You can see uh, syllogism question which were easy, uh, but in 2023, if you see, you don't have so many questions from uh, chapters like syllogism, direction test, blood relations, all that, which were very easy actually. Even if you see till 2019, they used to ask puzzles related question, okay. Even now, they are not there. So, they have reduced the number of questions in LR slowly, okay. And quant part. So, quant part, they are increasing the number of questions in quant part. Okay, even if you see in quant part, they used to ask uh, questions from every uh, chapter, for example, number system, time and work, time speed distance, profit loss, percentages, all that equally. But if you see 2023 question paper, 
So you have from the number system itself or the basic numeracy itself, you have more than 20, 25 questions from basic numeracy and you have more than 10 questions from permutation combination. So permutation combination is a little bit difficult topic for most of the people. So you have to observe this trend. They are increasing the number of questions where the chapters are difficult and they are not asking any questions where the chapters are very easy. So this is a trend. If you see this trend, you have to expect that next year maybe they'll ask more questions from number system they might jump from permutation combination to probability chapter because again probability chapter is a little bit difficult compared to permutation combination so they might ask more questions from probability so you can expect even they're not explored a lot of uh, time speed distance uh, chapter questions so, so they might ask more questions from that chapter which might look difficult for most of the people so you have to prepare in that way for that you need skills, right skills, right concepts.